you know, I think this field test is, is a real opportunity for us to, to take a big step in our understanding of, of gas hydrates and how they behave in, in a natural environment. You see this stuff it's late paper, March, the and Rick Baker of the United LSU States Department of Energy's National Energy Technology Laboratory and David Schoderbeck with the ConocoPhillips Technology Division are heading to the drill site on Alaska's north slope known as Ignik Sukumi No. 1, or fire in the ice. I think the, the data that's going to come from this test is, is going to be something that uh, you know, we at DOE and scientists around the world are going to be chewing on for a long time. We see this as a, as a really interesting opportunity to expand the scale of our experiments, which have previously been run uh, at benchtop uh, scales to a uh, truly field scale experiment uh, in order to make this technology commercial in the future we have to move forward incrementally from uh, laboratory experiment to field experiment I mean you look around at this uh, moonscape that we're we're driving through right now you know I don't think any most people don't have any idea of of what you really mean when you say you know this is happening on the north slope of Alaska they think oh there's there's oil and gas operations there already. You know this this shouldn't be that tough. But I mean, you you think about the the complexities of the the weather, the cold, the the remoteness. You know that on top of the you know the sheer complexity of a, a giant science experiment in the field. Basically, it's uh, it's really an exciting thing to to see this going on. And uh, yes, sir. I'd like to request permission to come on the pad. Roger that. Come on in. Make sure you put your pistol containment down below your truck. Roger that. Approximately a half mile beneath their feet, under a thick layer of permafrost, lies a layer of methane hydrate rich sandstone. It's an area where natural gas is trapped within a crystal structure of water, forming a solid similar to ice. Well, methane hydrates are uh, basically a, a solid lattice of ice in which the, the cavities are filled with a host gas, in most cases, that being methane. Uh, where they're found, that they happen to occur in very specific sets of conditions. You need both a source of gas, a source of water to form the ice, uh, as well as the specific temperature and pressure conditions, uh, high pressure, low temperature, so that the, the hydrates form. Uh, this occurs in a few rare places around the world, uh, primarily below and within permafrost in the Arctic region as well as in deep water environments off the continental shelf. We're interested both in how they behave naturally and what their role might be in the global environment, global, global climate change, uh, the global carbon cycle. But we're also very interested in how they might play a role in the global energy portfolio. Methane hydrates are naturally occurring deep beneath the ocean's floor and under Arctic permafrost in regions like Alaska's North Slope. Since 2003, ConocoPhillips has been conducting laboratory experimentation with the University of Bergen, Norway, in hopes of developing a commercially viable technology to produce natural gas from hydrates. ConocoPhillips Ignik Sukumi No. 1, a project with the U.S. Department of Energy as well as Japan Oil, Gas and Metals National Corporation, is the first experiment of this production technology outside a laboratory. Put simply, they are testing whether carbon dioxide injected into the hydrate structure will allow production of natural gas. We've already demonstrated in the laboratory through almost a decade of experiments that we can inject carbon dioxide into a hydrate and produce methane without melting or dissociating the hydrate. The goal of the field trial is to take that experiment from laboratory scale into the real world. We take liquid nitrogen, and liquid CO2, heat them to turn them into gases, and pressurize those gases for injection down the well. The composition of injected and produced gases is being constantly monitored to determine how effective the formation is at trapping carbon dioxide and producing natural gas. The technology involves the exchange of a carbon dioxide molecule with a methane molecule in the hydrate structure. Laboratory experiments have verified that the exchange is rapid 
and repeatable. The data that's coming out of this test is, is probably the most important thing uh, that's going to remain at the end of this. The, the flare that's burning outside is going to be gone at the end of this test, but the data, these reams and reams of data that they're collecting, uh, are going to be the, the, the important thing that we take, out, take away from this, that uh, we, we get to sign to, as scientists to continue to, to look at and chop up and dissect to try to really get an understanding of what's going on down hole, in a well, in a reservoir, with hydrates in it. Uh, you know, it's a key thing for DOE. That's where we need to go, is to understand what's really happening down there. And I think the data that's coming out of this is, is the only way that we're going to get there. This is a critical step. And uh, without Conoco and, and all the folks that are here on site making that happen, uh, we couldn't do this. Iknik Sukumi number one was drilled in 2011 in the winter, when very cold temperatures allow temporary access to the site with little disturbance to the Alaska North Slope tundra. Operations were suspended when temperatures began to rise in the spring. Activity began again in the winter of 2012. One of the things I think is unique about this is, I mean, you look out at this environment, you know, you get people asking you why is it why does it cost what it does to, to, to drill a well and, and do a, an experiment like this? And I think uh, just this environment, you know, as you look around, the harshness of it and all the conditions that you have, uh, I think really plays into to, to why it takes what it takes to, to do something like this. So the well house is uh, up ahead. And on the if successful, the exchange of carbon dioxide for methane has several benefits beyond supplying a clean source of energy. It takes a potent greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, and trades it for the cleanest burning fossil fuel, and in the process, maintains the integrity of the hydrate-bearing formation. Alaska, with its abundance of methane hydrates, is a natural laboratory to safely field test this process. The name Ignik Sukumi means fire in the ice, in the Inupiaq language. This well and the associated production field trial represent an important step to potential future production of methane hydrates, but only a step. Production testing of gas hydrates has to date not demonstrated commercial viability. This potential supply of a clean fossil fuel will remain untapped unless a technically and economically viable means of producing methane from hydrates and an efficient means of transporting the resource to market is found. There's a lot to learn and a long way to go. ConocoPhillips and the Department of Energy are invested in understanding the potential of this technology and its role in allowing access to a potentially significant new source of clean energy. With each step, we move forward towards a future where future generations can count on clean and reliable energy to fuel their hopes and dreams.